First off, I'm <laughs> First off, I want to thank you for allowing me to break bread with you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I have lived in Kissimmee in Osceola County my entire life. My parents came from Ohio and West Virginia. So like many of you, we just moved here. We just came here before Disney. <laughs> so we, we have seen the change as well as anyone else coming here. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about Osceola County. The fact that our diversity is here between all nations. I look at the languages that are even taught in school and the numbers that are spoken. And it's just outstanding that we see people from all over the world choosing to come and stay here. You know, and it's difficult because all of those differences, and there are many, it's easy to get caught up in the differences and be able to say, well, I don't like him because he's different. I try very hard to, to balance my life by taking the path that is difficult. And that difficulty for me is trying to help and find our commonality. We all know that we want safety, we want shelter, we want nourishment. And once we get that as individuals, then we work on our families and extend those out and how they move. But it's not easy to find those commonalities. Really what we have to do is start communicating again because that's the only way we do find them. So I've been the county commissioner in the western part of county from Thacker basically west until all the way to the county lines. So north on the north end uh, of Orange County, on the west end Lake, south end Polk, and then come back in. It's certainly a tourist area. It's certainly an area where we see many, many different people. But it's still places where we live. We still are there even after the tourists come and go. So it's up to us. Anyway, it's up to us individually. We have to do this individually because if, as we demonstrate individually, we, we show more to the community from that demonstration. So perfection, I'm not. Mistakes I, I make, I do. So, but I ask that we all look at each other and try to find those common bring ourselves together because ultimately we have seen in history there's enough death and killing in history that on various reasons I don't care what the reason is somebody did it for something and it's if we hope to change if we hope to see our world continue to move forward we have to make that change individually and I support that and that's why I had my friend here too John Cortez he's our state representative John He'll tell you a little bit when, when we have issues that come down from the state, he calls me and lets me know what it is so we can try to make sure we have our input. And I try to help here locally by, by giving him those ideas and those things that we need to approach. You know, we're a country of laws, but those laws get created by you and I, and we have to work hard to make sure they're, they're beneficial for us, all of us. Again, I, I've taken too much time, but I want to thank you again for allowing me to be here. If you so choose to vote, I'm up for re-election. <laughs> I'd like to stay. So my first uh, uh, political race is August 30th, the primary. And John is, has one also. But, uh, you know, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider uh, voting for at, in that time. Hartford. Hartford. I'm like Hartford, Connecticut, except, <laughs> except there's no T in my name. <laughs> so I, I tell everybody I'm T short of being on the beach selling insurance. <laughs> thank you. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank for you. This time. Thank you. Uh, I'm not up for re-election. <laughs> no. Uh, on behalf of Sheriff Hansel, who couldn't be here tonight, 
Um, I'm Major Dan Wise, and I truly appreciate allowing me to come here tonight. And when I say me, the Sheriff's Office, because I represent 722 employees of the Sheriff's Office. So thank you for al allowing us in your home, breaking bread and sharing this experience with you. Um, I truly uh, echo a lot of the comments that Commissioner Hartford had, had said, because you know, we talk about communication. You know, I, I've said this to a couple before to some of uh, some other mosques and stuff. You know, we in law enforcement, certainly it's not on the same level that you experience, but we experience some of the same drawbacks um, when you have a, you know, a, um, a radical jihad commit an unbelievable horrific act against your religion that you don't represent at all. That happens to us from time to time when we have Every now and then we have a, a use of force incident where a law enforcement officer from around the country, whether it's South Carolina, New York, who they make a bad decision, but that decision draws criticism towards the whole profession. And we are continuously trying to educate the public on the contrary. And that's a lot of what we have to do together, what you guys have to do on a daily basis. And then what we have to do so in order to do that, we need to come out, we need to communicate. We need to open up our house to you, um, certainly from a sheriff's office perspective. You know, we're working with Dr. Patel on a lot of different programs that we offer. So then we, we can get to know each other, even on a, a more personal level. Um, we, that's the only way that I think that we're going to ever overcome this, um, I can tell you. And you, you know this, it's, gonna, it's a battle. It's something that we do every day, every day, you know. When you look at the police, sometimes people have a negative uh, attitude. Just today, there were probably six million law enforcement encounters where nothing happened. You know, there was no, no use of force or anything like that. But yet we have one that goes bad. Those six million get criticized by the public. And in social media, we fight as good as social media is, we battle it just like you do every day. So, I mean, we continue to fight the fight um, because you're good people and don't forget it. And we're not gonna let one or two radicals ruin everything. So, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, a great meal. It was nice uh, breaking bread, would you like Mike said? My name is Representative John Cortez. I'm the newbie, I just been elected, I'm going for re-election now. But uh, I had uh, a lot of folks come up and visit, visit me and talk to me about what was going on, how they're being discriminated against, and uh, the things that were going on. And I got uh, a first-hand knowledge of uh, BDS, on how they're working uh, on certain things, and commonality and things that want to get done. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm from New York, I know about diversity, because I lived in a Hindu and a Muslim area. I lived in Richmond Hill, Queens by the airport. So I lived there for 13 years. So I went to the five-day weddings and everything else. Visited a couple of mosques. <laughs> but uh, I was a correction officer at the time. And I got to re meet the, the kids that were, we used to call them two percenters when they were in jail, asking just to be Muslim just to eat the meals. But then you had the, the faithful ones that read the Quran, prayed every day, and I respected them. And, and they were very pleasant. No, not everybody's, uh, there's always a bad apple in every race. When we first, Puerto Ricans came to New York, we, were the, we were used to live in basements, we killed cockroaches with our shoes, and we all those stereotype things. You guys are going through that phase right now, which is terrible, which every, I think every entity goes through when, when they come to New York or anywhere they go. But we need to break out of that cell. I tell everybody, I told them when they went, went to see me, I said, you're professionals, you're lawyers, you're teachers, you're business owners, stop going to different things. Just don't stay stuck in one thing. Go to different events, go vote. Go to political events, be a Republican, a Libertarian, whatever you want to be. But go do something where they see you, and that, then they don't want to be a threat. Because every, everybody stereotypes everybody. I get stereotyped all the time. So I'm just letting you know, I'm a local vocal approachable candidate. My office is by the lakefront, across from the, the little snack bar over there, those ugly brown houses. I'm on the first floor, anytime you want to come by, anything you want to tell me about, concerns, you have a, an idea, an idea becomes a bill, and a bill becomes a law. So anything like that, I'm here, I'm for you, I've been here, I'm trying to get here for the next two years. Like Mike said, I have a primary August 30th also. I didn't come here to politicize, but I just let you know anyway. Thank you. But anything you need, that's what I'm here for. And we gotta get the state to know what was going on. And when we have these committees for certain things, and you can look them up on uh, floridahouse.gov, 
and you, <coughs> and you can even put it in your phone, it gives you the bills that are up, and if they concern you, you could take a whole tribe or busload or whatever you want to do, and you can go protest. It's your given right. It's your citizens here. You got the right to do what you want to do. You're protected by the American Constitution. So use it. Use it to your favor. And that's all I got to say, and thank you for inviting thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.